Okay, so now we're going to take a look at Java Fundamentals 3.7. We will be working in Greenfoot again, and we will learn about sound and keyboard control. Some of this is review. It should not be very difficult, uh, and hopefully will be quick. So we'll move on. Our objectives for this lesson, we will be writing program statements to include sound in a program. We'll also write programming statements to include keyboard movements in a program, which we've already done. We will write programming statements to include mouse interaction in a program, and write programming statements to retrieve information from the user. So we'll look at keyboard controls first, and we see that, um, and maybe even know from experience, games are controlled by human or a computer player using a remote control or keyboard controls. Basically to make a scenario behave like a true game we need to use program statements to include keyboard controls so the player can control one or more objects in the game. We already saw the isKeyDown method and the isKeyDown method checks if a key on the keyboard has been pressed. It's located in the Greenfoot class, so we will always use greenfoot.isKeyDown when calling that method. It is a static method. It's associated with a class. We've seen that before. Um, so we don't reference an object to use it. We reference a class to use it. It returns true or false. Um, as we see here, that means it is Boolean. It expects a string argument in the parameter list. Um, so we see here string key. We'll see string arguments go in quotes or in between quotes and they can be used as a condition in an if statement. So again we'll see more of string parameter is key down. A string is a piece of text, word or sentence written in double quotes. For example and in the quotes this is a string. Even a single letter if it's in between double quotes is a string. A number in between double quotes is a string even though they don't show that here. Um, name in between quotes is a string. A st the string parameter in the isKeyDown method expects the name of the key to press on the keyboard. We can find a key's name by looking at the keyboard Sometimes the name isn't evident. The right key cursor in this example is called right. We have left, right, up, down. Um, any of the letters work. Some things may not work. You could test it. I already checked and the documentation does not give us a list of the, str the names. You could probably look them up online. So using the isKeyDown method example this code in the act method uses the left and right keys on the keyboard to allow the player to control the B object's direction as it moves. So we can see that we have already programmed this in the handle, movement, the handle movement method. They're showing it in the act method, but we moved that in the last unit. Um, and it's something we've used before. Left is in between the quotes and we see that is a string. Next we move on to including sound in a game. Sounds can enhance a game. They can be used to give feedback to the player when they win, lose, or achieve minor victories throughout the game. They include background, you can include backgrounds sounds in a game also. The play sound method is used to play sounds in a game. The method is located in the Greenfoot class. The parameter list for play sound expects the name of a sound file as a string as an argument. The method does not return data. So here is a sample. The play sound method is called using dot notation in the body of the catch fly method. We do this because um, we have to refer to a specific class. In this case, we have fly.class. Whenever the B object catches a fly, it makes a sound. 
and we'll go ahead and we'll program in a slurp sound or we could download one off the internet if you prefer to do that. Um, we can actually record original sounds and they tell us we can go to the controls menu and show sound recorder and now we can actually record a sound. The sound needs to be in the same folder or in the sounds folder of the scenario. Um, so I'm going to record. That's my slurping sound. And now I'll play it. I will highlight the part that I want to keep. Trim to selection. And now I'm going to name it. So I'll name it Slurp. It'll automatically take the WAV. We'll click Save. It appears that it's going to go automatically where it needs to. We'll go back to the code for the fly. There's my fly. I will go back to the code for the bee and we'll go where we remove the fly, catch fly, remove touching, fly class, and then we'll add in greenfoot dot play sound slurp dot wave and compile I like to compile before I exit to see if I get any errors and I think I am I forgot the semicolon Okay, so now I'm going to add the play sound code. Greenfoot dot play sound slurp slurp dot wave. And compile, make sure we compile. No errors, so that's good. Um, and we'll run and there we go so now let's see what we do next um, steps to record the original sound we took a look at that's where we just were um, we saw the sound recorder display already um, use the mouse Greenfoot allows multiple input methods rather than just using the keyboard. There's also the ability to use controllers, mice, and other input devices. You may wish to use a mouse within the scenario you are building rather than the keyboard. And the Greenfoot class has a number of methods that allow you to gather or get information on the mouse actions. These include get mouse info, mouse clicked, mouse dragged, ended, that's when you stop dragging, and mouse dragged, mouse pressed. So here's an example. Um, the scenario we're building does not use mouse controls, but let's show an example. If we add an actor called Spider and we wish to detect when the mouse was clicked on an instance of it, we would do the following. If Greenfoot mouse clicked this which refers to that specific spider, then we do something. So we'll go ahead and um, see if we want to detect if the mouse is clicked elsewhere, 
we would use the mouse info class. So we'll see there's a separate class for mouse info. Below we see code that would move the current instance to the location where the mouse was clicked. Mouse info mouse. We create an object of mouse. Um, greenfoot dot get mouse info. If mouse does not equal null, which basically means if you click the mouse, um, then we're going to go ahead and get the button. And if the button is equal to button one, we'll set the location of the mouse at mouse dot get x mouse get y. So we'll set the location to wherever we click the mouse button. Now, one thing that's important because you might wonder how do they know to use that one. So we'll look at the Greenfoot class documentation and we'll look at mouse info and then we will look at um, get button and notice for get button usually one is the left two is the middle and three is the right um, now if you have a scrolly mouse then two is going to be the scrolly mouse and we can test this using various items. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll code this in here. We will add the code to the B class to make the B move where we click. So we'll open up B. Um, it should be one of these. There's my V. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and add a method called move mouse. And we'll go ahead and we'll put this we'll go ahead and we'll put this code into move mouse mouse info mouse which is basically creating an instance of the class mouse info equals greenfoot dot get mouse info if mouse does not equal null basically if we detect something was clicked on the mouse then we're going to do something and basically at that point what we're going to do is check if mouse dot get button equals one. Remember for comparison we use a double equal sign. Single equal sign is assignment. Then we're going to set location of the mouse or of the we're going to set the location of the B to the mouse's coordinates. So we use mouse dot get x comma mouse dot get y. See if we compile no errors. So if we run it we see it's not running. Um, it's not running because I failed to call the method we need to go ahead and call the method move mouse. Now hopefully you can see the benefit of creating separate methods. See all of this extra code, yet in the act method we only have four method calls. So we'll compile. Um, 
um, we'll minimize that and now let's run and we see he moves to where I click obtaining keyboard input from the user there may be a point in the program that you wish to gain input for the from the user such as asking for a name if you ever play a game that asks for your name when you get the high score there we go I'm um, asking for starting speed um, so in Greenfoot it is possible using um, the Greenfoot method called ask to go ahead and ask the user for input. So we'll go ahead and we'll add that. Um, and they're going to have us put this. We'll go ahead and we'll put this in the world and use it when the world is instantiated. I'm just going to put this, we'll put it in prepare. It's part of what happens. Actually, we won't put it in the prepare. We'll put it after that because it's not really on the creation of the world. Um, so we're going to put string name. String means we're creating a variable of type string. We're going to call that variable name equals greenfoot.ask basically calling a method from the Greenfoot class please input your name and compile does it work it did no errors um, they're not clear on that how to do that I didn't ask you to do anything with it anyhow um, notice it asked my name so I'll put my name, click OK, and now it creates the world. So at this point, we're done with the chapter or the unit. And terminology, we learn the following terms. Keyboard control, play sounds, mouse interaction, and ask. In summary, um, we learned how to write programming statements to include sound in the program. We learned how to write programming statements to include keyboard movements in a program. We learned how to write programming states, statements to receive the mouse state and we learned how to write programming statements to retrieve a response from the user. At this point we're done. Please let me know if you have any questions.